So this first category is name that's most likely to get you pulverized on the playground. Doug Buffoon from the Bears. I know his name is Buffoon. But what third grader is going to respect that? They're going to call him Doug Buffoon. And it's going to hurt. It's going to sting. What about Emerson Boozer? Ever since he was born, people were like, you're a boozer. You're a boozer. You know, I hope he's not an alcoholic. I really should have Googled it. Because if he is, this is super not funny. It sure as heck got him beat up on the playground. But the winner of player most likely to get pulverized on the playground because of his name, Lynn Dickey. He's got a double dose of trouble. His first name is Lynn. It's a girl's name. He's going to be hurt because of that. But then look at his last name, Dickey. It's Dickey. Put them together and it's practically child abuse. I think that's a reportable offense. Who does that to their kid? This next category is player most likely to leave his cake out in the rain. This next category, I've had a bad day. Please don't take my picture. Paul Krause. He can barely hold himself up. Please don't take his picture. Give him a break. What about Joe Green? He's really upset. I mean, he's mean Joe Green. There probably won't be a good day to take his picture. But what about Mike? He's got a migraine. And here's another guy having a really bad day. Jim Lynch. He's just angry. Marvin Upshaw. I mean, he cannot see straight. He's having such a bad day. But winner of I'm having a bad day. Please don't take my picture. Bob Babich from the Browns. Bob Babich. The next category is player you're most likely to trust a wad of cash with. Don Cockroft. He looks like a banker. He doesn't look like a football player. Any loose change? Any money I had on hand? Absolutely, I'd give it to Don. But he doesn't win. The winner of player I'd most likely to trust a wad of cash with, Essex Johnson from the Bengals. Look at him. He eschews peace, trustworthiness, and his name Essex. It just is almost biblical. I'll give him all my money. I don't need a bank anymore. This next category is best part. Check out Joe Gillum from the Steelers. He's got about 85% of his hair on one side of his head. I mean, that's a severe part. John Brockington, kind of doing the same thing. Joe Dawkins, also. He's got, a, you know, a designated borderline there between one side of his head and another. Vic Washington, same sort of thing. Severe parts. But look at Golden Richards. The hair on the top of his head dare not touch the hair on the side of his head. He's got the Red Sea of parts. I mean, Moses could lead a whole group of Israelites through that part. What about Mike Reed from the Bengals? I don't trust somebody who parts their hair in the middle. Okay, make a decision. Part to the left, part to the right. Jarrell slicking his hair down. Severe part, no good. But the winner of best part, the Giants, Bob Grimm. He's got this kind of like twinkle toes little part there in his hair. And it's, it's bad on so many levels. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. For this next category, we're going to bring it down a minute for some names that have passed. These are names that we haven't seen in over 45 years, and we miss them. Vivian. Zeke. Ale. Where have all the Al's gone? Al is such a good, solid name. Two letters. It's simple. You know you can trust an Al. I have not seen an Al in four decades. Same thing for Art. You know Art's a good guy. He's gotta be. Blaine. Rayfield. Elmo. Ever since that Tickle Me guy came around, that name hasn't been the same. And what about Royce? Of course you can't name your kid Royce Berry anymore. People would assume you're some kind of organic produce from Whole Foods. Haven. Haven Moses. I mourn the passing of the name Haven. But the winner of the name we most mourn the passing of? Len. I, I need Len. I guarantee none of you know any Lens. If anybody can show me actual proof that they know a Len, I will buy you a car. 
The next category is most awkward kicking position. John Leipold from the Bills. What what are you doing? Are you, are you were you kicking two balls here? How'd you get those two legs in front of you like that? The next category is most in need of a buzz cut. Now back in the 70s, buzz cuts were not much of a thing. There weren't a lot of guys who could pull it off. Today, everybody does it. But back then there was very few. Neil Craig from the Bills, he did it perfectly. That is what a, a buzz cut should be. Ernie Holmes was trying, but for reasons unknown to me, he had geographic shapes carved into his head. Okay. But here's some guys who should have gotten a buzz cut, but who were desperately hanging on to what little hair they had. Dick Anderson. Come on, bud. Walt, you are not fooling anybody. Just take it all off. Come on, seriously. Cliff, we're a little distracted by your stash, but we can't help but notice you don't have a heck of a lot of hair. Just go with the buzz cut. You'll look great. You really will. But the winner of most needing a buzz cut, Mel Renfro from the Cowboys. The next category is, don't you feel guilty tackling your grandpa? And that's George Blandy. Gray hair. And he's got two hands holding up his head. He's on the bench and he can barely keep his head up. He's, he wants to nod off. He wants to take a nap. Who's going to tackle him? I mean, who would have the, the disrespect to tackle an old man like that? And what about Howard Twilley from the Dolphins? I mean, he's a little confused. He's looking off in the distance. It's a clump of trees, but he's pretty sure it's a photographer. He's not sure where to look. You're not going to tackle Howard, are you? I mean, you're going to lay him out after he catches the pass? I don't think so. Who would do that to their grandpa? But the winner of least likely to be tackled because they look like a grandpa? Bobby Howfield. And I'm not even trying to make fun, but I just picture him wandering around in the parking lot trying to find his car after the game. God. This next category is most forlorn team. So check out the Broncos. We got Jim. We got Bill. We got Floyd. They can't quite bear to make eye contact. They can't look at the camera guy. Right? They're just, they're not feeling good. Well, what about the Bears? They're even worse. Gary Huff. Wally looking up and off into the distance. Rich can't bear to make eye contact. Carl, same thing. There's a little bit of fear in their eyes. Sadness, a deep sadness. But the winner of most forlorn team, the Falcons. Dennis. Tommy. Clarence, what's wrong? Raise your heads up. Look at me, please. What's the matter? You're so forlorn. The next category is best rocking two initials for a first name. J.D. Hill. Perfect. J.D. Hey, J.D. It works on all levels. And same thing with J.T. Thomas. Yo, J.T., Want to go down to the mall later and get Slurpee? Whatever we get at the mall. And you think it's easy. Just put two letters together. But it doesn't. Leroy Jordan, he was going to try that. Hey, call me LR. Call me LR Jordan. It doesn't work. He had to stick with Leroy. But the winner of best name rocking two initials? Dee Dee. Dee Dee Lewis. I know it's kind of a girl's name if you say it fast. But still, Dee Dee Lewis. Awesome couple of speed categories. First one, most confusing card. Burt Jones, what the hell's coming out of your head? It's like some kind of metal contraption. Are you okay? Most anxious, Roy Jarella. This next category is best show hair. It goes to Tom, or as he's better known by his friends, Tom Darden. I mean, that's a beautiful head of hair. I mean, it's great, right? But I think it's pretty much just for show. I, I'm not positive that it would fit in the helmet. I think this guy, he got the little envelope and, you know, from the NFL Picture Day company saying, hey, we're going to do Picture Day. So he got his hair looking fine and fantastic. But it's just for show. The minute he puts his helmet on, this is crushed. Like, I'd actually like to see it when he takes his helmet off. It's either that or he's riding the bench really hard. The next category is most sickly. And that's Billy Parks from the Oilers. I hope everything's okay with Billy. I, I don't want to make fun of him, right? It's just that he looks like maybe syndrome-y. I don't know what's going on. So, Billy, I hope everything's okay. The next category is place I'd most like to be. Forest Blue. Forest Blue, how beautiful. I'd like to live there. I'd like to have a house there. I'd like to have a second house there. I'd like to have my boat there. 
I don't have a second house or a boat, but if I did, I'd want them to be in forest blue. Next category is player who most looks like my Uncle Buddy. Joe Scabelli. Doesn't he look like your Uncle Buddy? Don't all Uncle Buddies look like this? Obviously, if you don't have an Uncle Buddy, I'm sorry, and just ignore this category. Next category is, hey, can you make sure you get my good side? Mm, sorry, Archie. Next category is, you know, am I getting residuals from this? It goes to Joe Ferguson. This card is for the Dolphins, is for Bill. This is Bill. You barely see him because all you see is Joe Ferguson getting himself sacked. He is the star of that card. Surely he should be making some money off of it. This next category is Best Children's Nursery Rhyme. Old Marv Hubbard went to the cupboard to get himself some curds and whey. Along came Otis Sistrunk and sat down beside him and scared poor Marv away. This next category is Shut Up, Sit Down on the Bench, and I'm going to Take Your Picture. I don't want to waste my time. You are the Detroit Lions after all. Bob. Bill. Larry. Earl. Levi. Paul. Rodney. Alfie. Greg. I mean, they're just sitting on the bench. Look at the background. The photographer spent all of 20 seconds. It's not fair. They may be the Detroit Lions, but my God, they're still men. And our final category is, you know, don't they consider the backgrounds and pictures? Any photographer, even just a non-professional knows, you got to consider the background, right? Look how great Ken looks. Somebody took the time to pose him with a great structure behind him. Looks great. Look at Bruce. He looks like almost like a model. The mountains, the sky, greenery in the background. Fantastic. Now, the Bengals, I don't think they had as much to go with. But what do you do? You put them up with the crowd in the background. It screams football. It's perfect. The Bills, Bruce Jarvis, a blue sky. White puffy clouds. Awesome. Perfect. So if somebody was thinking about it and doing some great backgrounds, why couldn't they all do that? What was this photographer thinking? Poor Dennis has got a scaffolding growing out of his head. What about Doug Deacon? He seems to be facing off against some office buildings. What about Diron Tablet? Is it, I don't know if that's a porno potty? Some kind of somebody's house in the background? Looks like half of Joe Theismann's leg in there? Come on, you got to do better than that. But what about the photographer for the Broncos? Look at Lyle. Paul. Bill. Bobby. Pete. They all have light stands looming ominously over their shoulders. You're telling me the photographer couldn't have said, hey, you know what, Bobby, Bobby Maples, scooch a little to your left. I mean, maybe half a step, maybe a step. I think you can do it. You're an athlete. I don't want to have a huge light stand in the picture. Can you do that for me, Bobby? But the winner of Don't You Consider the Background Anymore? Andy Russell from the Steelers. That's somebody's butt in the background and somebody's helmet. My grandmother can frame pictures better using her iPhone. Come on.